it's on, so. All right. Welcome to Talking Beer. I'm Ryan. I'm Brett. And we're talking about, well, looks like sours. Yeah, it just <laughs> turned out that way, luckily, for us. Uh, lots of stuff going on. Fourth of July coming up. Uh, hope you guys yeah. are all having safe, fun plans. But yep. uh, most of all, safe, because, you know, everybody's going to be partaking in a little of this. Yes. But uh, it is a Wednesday, so it's going to be kind of probably a weird week for everybody. Yeah, I think you'll probably celebrate, you know, the whole week, maybe. Yeah, if you're lucky. So, session beers. We recommend session beers for if you're going to celebrate all week, okay. all day, Why and that? for hours, so that Why you can that? drink more and all be right. social and not be, you know, done before the first set of the dead show <laughs> because you drank way too much in the parking lot and now you can't remember anything. All right, Brett, so what are we drinking today? Let's. <laughs> Let's dive into this, cause I. Well, we brought. Some... I brought. I brought some stuff. Uh, you had some stuff that we left from. Um, just this is something hoppy, new, um, new can, new package from Dogfish that I'm very excited about because it fits our New England style. I mean, it's not a New England style IPA, but it's a. It's it's an essence of our IPAs, uh, except for the fact that it's not cloudy. Um, it doesn't have that same creamy mouthfeel, but it is a regular IPA, you know, um, with juicy hops, no bitterness, uh, or very little bitterness. But we can try it. I mean, we can try it. And then try anything. I got a brand new beer from Jamal at Stony Creek and the team down there, um, a hibiscus uh, and ginger goza. Um, I would imagine that that's going to be uh, like a, a like a uh, totally. fuchsia color, like. Definitely fruity. Goza, finish a little bit of a sea salt on the end. Totally reminded me of a surf movie in the 70s. Look at that, it's cool graphics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool graphics. But the realization of a dream set against the background of some of the hottest high energy surfing footage ever filmed. North Shore. And then, we, and then, so that's a Goza, and then we have, you know, a real sour that hit wood uh, from Wicked Weed. Uh, that came out of my basement cellar. Uh, I'm really looking forward to drinking that. Right, I forgot I was in your refrigerator. <laughs> let's, let's pop it open. All right. So what's the? We and have then two we goes here. A bone. Uh, this is a bone goes. No, that's not a goose. Goose. That's Sorry. a goose. Goose and it goes. Oh, I'm glad we have them goose both. Goose and it goes. Those are confusing. They're totally different styles. Why are they different? What is this a, different about? A goose a sour. Sour satin wood uses Britannomyces, Britannomyces. Uses the bacteria and everything that built up in the wood over the years. Um, and and definitely satin wood yep. and matured, where that is a kettle sour ah, style beer, okay. um, and and uh, then the fruit is added. Uh, ooh, nice. So what am I gonna expect here? What, well, this is cherries. This is this cherry is called persistence barrel aged American sour ale fermented with cherries. I believe this is a year or so old. Could be more. It's a cool brown color. I actually expect it more to be like the uh, cherry gobble, like a gobble funk. Yeah, oh, that would be great. I was just talking to those guys about that beer again and how good it was. Because <laughs> I drank that can you gave me the other night, and it, yeah. so it was like two weeks in between, yeah. two and a half weeks maybe, and the can tasted exactly as it did when you and I opened it on this program. Nice. Like it didn't, it it was it didn't fail. No, no it didn't, it didn't fall. fall off at all. The fruit was there. It wasn't. Really weird, sweet. There was no diacetyl. It wasn't like it didn't break down at all. It was perfect. What's, what's that mean, diacetyl? Diacetyl is, tastes like ruby butter popcorn, and those oh, really so rich kind of things sometimes overly staley kind of. It can happen. I've had it in some of those really fruity beers where they just fall off, and you get some weird taste. It kind of either tastes like diacetyl or something like it. Ooh, it's nice. It's, uh, it's a nice solid cherry nose. So does this get heavy? Like, uh, I mean, fall heavy? When If it's sitting in my basement for a long period of time, would this be all down here? Eventually, some of the fruit and the yeast would sit down on the bottom. But there's not a lot. They do filter it pretty well, right? I think, I don't think it's filtered. I'm okay. pretty sure it's not filtered. Actually. All right, so but, you will But there's certain tricks to brewing. And, yep. Where the, you know, you, you're looking at the fermentation tank, it has that cone on the bottom. Yeah. After a certain amount of time, the yeast falls out of suspension. Even ale yeast, which right. this is all ale yeast. Ale is top fermenting, mm -hmm. well, where lager is bottom fermenting, 
but even when it goes to the top, as soon as it's done okay, so let me working, just, let me stop you it still second. falls down to the bottom and ends up in that cone. So the lager's sitting at the bottom, the yeasts are sitting at the bottom with the sugars and the yeast. Well, kind of it eats out. from the bottom yep. and, and it so stirs up everything. And so it's always moving. So this is, the yeast is kind of suspended and eating its way because it it's, it's in the bottom. Small. It's confined to the bottom of the tank. Gotcha. Ale yeast is at the top of the tank and it eats it. It does all its work at the top. Yeah. Um, but when it's done, the ale yeast still falls down into that cone, at the bottom of the cone. And then when, the, when it's done working, they, that part of it goes in the garbage. Gotcha. Down the drain. So what if you put both of them? So if it all falls out, it's still clear like this. Like this definitely is not perfect. I mean, it's... No, no, yeah, you can see it's clearly like got a little bit of a haze fog to it. Yeah, and that's just the yeast in suspension. Um, so what happens if you put a lager and an ale yeast together? They... CM76? Um, if it's... One starts at the top, one starts at the bottom? You do them at different times. You brew it with one, ferment it with one yeast, and then you ferment it with another yeast. I have a buddy. I thought maybe I was coming up with an idea. No, uh, <laughs> no. Um, uh, Sam 76 is just that. Yeah. They, they brewed a ale so that it had the esters and the behavior and the taste profile and the nose of an ale and then lagered it so that it became a little bit more clean and crisp. Mm. But started from something that had more flavor to it, uh, so and and wow, so it makes it nice and clean. And it's almost like a Kolsch kind of Kolsch is kind of like that, okay. where you it's an ale yeast, but it's lagered. But they don't use lagered yeast; it's just lagered, so it's kept in a cold cellar for a while, aged, you know, and uh, uh, conditioned. So uh, Fourth of July, you got any big plans? I don't have any big plans. I do have fireworks left over from last year that I got from a friend of mine. I think I want to open this one. I'm looking forward to smash those, lighting those fireworks off, though, to be honest with you. Okay. They're not from uh, Connecticut. So they're going to be good ones. They're good ones. I have to hurry you along. Ooh. Oh, this is... Uh... I have not drank it yet. I, I got, I'm pretty excited to pretty drink cool. it. It's pretty cool. It's different. Then last year, I'm told it was called Sorrel last year, S-O-R-R-E-L, but they tweaked it and um, and repackaged it, and it was not available in cans. It was draft only last year. Um, so cool packaging, cool new thing from Stony Creek. Yeah, Stony Creek is always good. I'm not rushing, man. I just was uh, excited to try something new. How'd you fire that down so fast? My eyes are watering. That was so delicious. <laughs> so right off the bat, this is a... Uh, I like the color. Like a champagne. <laughs> pink. Like a pink champagne. A rosé. A rosé. Nice. So it kind of goes with the can. I like even it. The, even the, I like the fact that the foam is the that color the too. The foam is bubbly and pink. So we should have had this on Valentine's Day. Romantical. Oh yeah. <laughs> we literally just got it though. Uh, so it is available as of Monday. The, uh, it's a fresh, fresh smelling. It, it actually almost kind of has a pulpery kind of. It's just a slight tartness, not a huge yeah. tartness. But it's definitely in that category where it's tart and fruit beer for sure. I think it's, I'm uh, not picking up too much ginger, which is good. I'm not a huge ginger sour. fan. Yeah, I'm not either. Hibiscus, okay. So just a little bit on the nose. I think, I think it's, it's the hibiscus that you It does really marry up well together, all those flavors. A slight tartness, slight finish of the sea salt, you know, it's a little slight. I get the sea salt and the hibiscus, I get like almost no ginger, which you know kind of makes me happy because it can be overpowering. Yeah, the word is big though on the can. I'm glad I don't taste it that big. Yeah. Because I'm not, like I said, I'm not a huge ginger fan, but this is good. This is good, nice and refreshing, good summer. This would deck be good beer. for the boat beer. You just need a blue beer, a red beer, and oh. Oh, One you can, more use, you you can do spike. July. You could do the the spike seltzer. It's almost white. It's clear. Okay, there you go. Spike seltzer. A white can. A little the, the hibiscus ginger and uh, what's uh, blue? A blueberry uh, something yeah, or other. Blueberry sour or something. 
Uh, uh, very good. That's very nice. So yeah, the uh, July 4th, make sure you, you know, drink responsibly, but uh, definitely go to the store, find some cool stuff. You're gonna be probably with a bunch of people and Sharon is caring, we've talked about that before. So it's yeah. fun to go out and try some new things and, and see what they have at the store. And Especially you know, there's a bunch drink, of new stuff out much. there. Like something like this, I don't know if I would've picked up off the shelf, but now that I've tried it, I would totally tell someone go grab, grab you know, a pack of this so we can uh, drink it. I gotta drink some hops. I'm with you. Yeah, I know you're not a huge fan of hops. No, I, I, but you stomach it with me. I'm warm. Because we man. end up drinking a lot of it here in this program. That's true. Because we love it here in New England. But I, I, like I said in the past episodes, it's funny. The more beers I try, the more I kind of start to develop a palate for it and understand it more. Well, our, our IPAs up here in New England are delicious. I mean, they're just phenomenal. I mean, I love them. Especially there uh, is no hop fatigue from hop fatigue for me, and I'm sure a lot of other people that are standing next to in line at different breweries. No, can't imagine. So, so what yeah. should I be uh, looking for here? It's got a nice little chill haze. It's not like I said. It's not a New England style IPA. What what style would you say? What is it? IPA. It's just IPA. Just is IPA. Other, so is there? What is the ABV? Um, seven. So it's an IPA, a regular IPA, American, okay. American, IPA. America, so this is a good America beer. Um, so it's got a nice Are there other nose. styles in New England? IPAs? American like, IPA. That's I mean, the other version? There's no like West Coast IPA? Session and, well yeah, no there is, it's West Coast IPA. Um, and that's different than an English IPA. An American IPA, I feel now, is not all that bitter, but it isn't hazy like in a New England style IPA. A West Coast IPA is super clean, has a, some bitterness to it, yep. um, but definitely has floral. It has floral and bitter. Um, Lagunitas is a good one. Okay. You know, um, that screams uh, West Coast IPA to me, and it's delicious, especially a nice, fresh Lagunitas IPA is is fire, quite frankly. It's awesome. Fire in one way. Fire, and the kids are saying that good beer's now fire. Oh. You know, you can just say the fire logo and when you're looking at a beer. Like, like that's just fire. fire, it's hot. It's, yeah, it's, it's hot. <laughs> it's fire. Uh, it, if, the funny thing is, when we first opened this, I thought it said liquid Trump. Oof. <laughs> I just yeah. read it, I was like, what? True. Oh. Edit that part out. Maybe time to get my eyes checked. <laughs> <laughs> it's truth. So it's the op. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but We're like, not getting gotcha. political on this show. Yeah. We're just talking about beer. I do like these little fun hop guys jumping in the pool. It is a good graphic. I, hope you put, I, put, I enjoy I it. Plan on doing some of that. And we're going to be delivering it cold at HDI. Oh, nice. Yes, we're going to keep it cold. So you're going to chill it, deliver it in the warehouse, and chill it all the way to the, all the way to the store, is and there, try to put it in the cooler when we get there. Is there a big benefit to that? I believe it keeps the hops and that hop note fresher, longer. Okay. I mean, I always put, and I recommend putting IPs in the refrigerator as soon as you bring them home. Sure. Like I wouldn't leave them. I was sitting by the side kind of thing, waiting for the next time you're not. No. I finally got another refrigerator in my garage. A little mini dorm room fridge. Just something to keep a, the on-the-go package there. It's funny. I drive around every day with cold beer in my yeah. car. Cause, and it's what you do. The Long Trail Vermont IPA and the Tropical Lover from Sweetwater right. every day. And now I'm going to be traveling around with this every day uh, also. But, uh, so now I don't have to bring them all the way inside my house. I can just put them in the refrigerator in my garage and then put them back in my Yeti and... Yeti and go. So if you see my car on the road, I probably have those three beers cold. Be but we cannot drive at, once we drink them. We have to just stop for a while. Okay. Sampling and sharing. Sampling and sharing. Enjoy your uh, July 4th. Have a wonderful one. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Oh, share this too. Please. So, Barney, Lance, Wade, what are you guys?
start calling me Rick. Not a Barney anymore, Barney.